Hi guys and welcome back. So this video is going to be a vlog and I want some of your suggestions and I want some of your comments because I want to know what to do next. Now I have a ton load of things, sometimes I just think too much and I can't figure what to do. But before we get started in that, I want to tell you the reason why I started testing. And it goes all the way back about more than a year now. What I did is I made a build that I could never ever get off the ground. And that build was a HDLRC F3 V3, the Razer Star MS series ESCs, and Emacs 2306 2750KV. And what happened is, when I turn it on, the thing goes crazy. It almost killed me. I turned, that's, that's like when I learned never to ever turn on the quad indoors, ever, no matter what it is. And, um, and, another, <laughs> and I didn't really learn from that because the other day I turned on the iFlight uh, Micro, that's BNF. And that happened. It just took off straight into the ceiling. I don't know how the hell I'm going to fix this, but hopefully the owner doesn't watch my videos. Um, anyways, so that thing would never fly. And I just, I went crazy. I wanted that thing to fly. And I kept testing and I boiled it down to EMF, which is electromagnetic field. Or EMI, electromagnetic interference. So what happens is, let's just get this to focus. The voltage through lines just goes back or the current goes back and forth and then it creates this magnetic field and this magnetic field in return interferes with anything electronic. And I was never able to really test it but I really boiled it down to that because that's because the, the, the receiver would just go crazy. It would go crazy when that thing turns on. Uh, the, obviously the motors were overpowering the ESC and the ESC was really terrible. And uh, I didn't know that at the time and I really wanted to get a oscilloscope thus starting my channel into the real ESC reviews. It was because of that issue. However, forward about a year now, and um, I'm finally going to be able to replicate the issue and really see what's going on. I do have a spectrum analyzer here. It's not, it's, it is a spectrum analyzer. It's called the Hack RF. And uh, we're gonna be able to see Basically, electromagnetic electromagnetic interference. We'll be able to see that. We'll see spikes. It's going to be graph. It's going to be pretty cool. So I can't wait to get that started with. But that's going to take a little bit because I need to replicate it perfectly, perfect, and uh, get some kind of consistent results before I make a video on that. So I know what I'm talking about. And uh, the next video is going to be the low the LC filters. Now I know many of you have been waiting for these. However, I was going to add the voltage regulators, the buck voltage regulators, step down voltage regulators with this. But I'm not going to do that because the voltage regulators need a separate video because there's so many variables into a voltage regulator because specific voltages can even introduce noise with no noise. So there's a lot of things going on to it and I really want to keep it for a separate video. So that's one thing. This is going to be the next video. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do most of the shootouts now. Obviously, I'm not going to finish the shootouts. They will continue for a very long time as long as the channel continues and you guys keep giving me suggestions. And I'm just waiting for Patreon right now to go through really so I can pay for the rent. And I can pay for maybe like $400 worth of low ESR capacitors. I want to buy a ton load of low ESR capacitors. Every single one uh, every, from a bunch of companies. Panasonic, Rubicon. There's some other expensive one that starts with a V. I don't even know how to pronounce it. So there's all kinds of crazy things. Figure out what is the best low ESR capacitor. Without just looking at stupid data sheets, we'll actually get to see what's really going on. So that's pretty interesting. And... Um, yeah, so I'm just waiting for Patreon to go through. And anyways, any, any support goes an absolute way, guys, if you guys could support that. Oh, yeah, and another thing. Check this out. Now, what is this? It's two electric skateboards. They're both exactly the same, except the battery's different. Over there, I have the LG 6.4 amps, and in here, I have the Tesla Sanyo battery, which is hella expensive. And um, I really love them. <laughs> I really, really love them. Now, there's something pretty interesting about these. Let's, let's just sit down here. There's something pretty cool about these. So these are basically, they're all using these generic ESCs. And these generic ESCs are on the Meepo, Onboard, WowGo, and a bunch of other ones. This is the third generation with the good remote. But each of them has their own flavors. And what do I mean by that? Some of them have push to start. That means when you just move the wheel, the ESC will turn on, turn on the whole board. Some have a button like mine. Some even have a battery indicator. Some has four modes. So there is a way to program these guys, and I want to figure it out. Now I got in contact with the kind of I got in contact with the manufacturer, but they're pretty difficult to get information out of because I really, really am dying to understand these ESCs because we can do so many awesome, cool things with. 
and it's just going to be so interesting you know just you be able to mod it like it's just going to be super awesome I, I can tell you that and by the way these are the top speed is faster than the boosted board and um the range is also even longer these are just insane they're really as advertised which is uh, it's just incredible i mean when i first got this one i was like ah you know i was worried about customs and i actually passed through customs i don't know how the hell they do this it came from europe so for a very good price you know no tax no nothing i was just like my jaw dropped i was like okay well i'm gonna get me another one <laughs> and the reason why i'm getting another one is because i am planning on making electronic skateboard stuff but not your average electronic skateboard. I'll obviously ride it and stuff, but I also want to get into modifications and testing the motors. For example, I wish I would have waited a little bit longer to get this one because they re introduced these new motor wheels because obviously the, there's two motors on this board and they are basically the wheels also. These are it right here. And uh, these are very much a pain to replace the, the urethane here once it you know wears out, obviously it'll wear out. But the, re the, the releasing the newer version, which is I think the second generation of these motors, which are easily replaceable and you could easily find the urethane for them. So I wish I would have waited because I, I figured that out once I received this one. I kind of just slapped myself in the face, but it's okay. It's not a problem because I'll be doing kits and testing DIY, DIY stuff and going to eBay, going to AliExpress, going to Banggood, and I'm going to be getting everything I possibly can step by step. And... Um, doing these kind of crazy cool tests because I really can't wait to get started on these because this is to be honest I really love this I, I barely ever drive my car anymore now uh, I just drive these everywhere and um, I'm just I'm just very happy and, and very pleased with them like I, I can't I cannot you know I could easily recommend this with, with no, no doubt in my mind that you're gonna have a blast it's reliable I haven't had a single issue uh, they charge pretty quick and uh, the batteries, I mean, I'm ne I didn't try the Samsung, which is the cheap one. I got the LG, which is the mid-range, and then the high-range Tesla. But they're all the same components, just the batteries are different here. The remote is spectacularly awesome also. So these things are just um, to die for, really. I mean, I'm, I'm just in love. So it's super awesome. I really love them. So right now I'm charging that one, then I charge this one. And then I just go drive around if I want to relax. It's like, it's the best anti-anxiety it's better than any anything you've ever taken for anxiety like if you take i don't know let's say say xanax for anxiety like medically prescribed xanax or something of that nature you won't need it anymore with these um you really don't i mean you just get on the board and just enjoy yourself put your headphones on just ride and the thing is you ride fast and you ride for a pretty damn long time which is just i can't explain it. it's just very good so this one, a lot of people, do the big camera build, do the big camera build. Well, I am, but it needs a little bit more time than expected because there's no way to mount the flight controller. Well, there is, but it's for like Pixhawk where you just double-sided tape and then it's like comes with this plastic case and you stick it there and you're good to go. Here, it's not the case because we're going to be using the Matek F405 CTR and I don't want to get a Pixhawk. So this board here is damped somewhat, as you can tell here. They go into these little rubber gummies. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the measurements of this top plate here right there and I'm gonna go ahead and design and cut a new one out of carbon fiber and we're also gonna need to do another thing which is create a payload bay out of carbon fiber now I already figured it out maybe some 3d printed parts with some carbon fiber will do the trick here uh, I do have the gimbal and someone actually noticed that the gimbal was not for a session it was for a hero and he was correct and that really pissed me off so now what this is a turret I'll leave linked it down below if you're curious so now what I'm going to do is have to design some kind of a case for my my session GoPro and to make it like a hero. So that's something that I'm going to have to do here. And uh, what else do we have here? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. And I, I think that's really it, guys. I, I really do think there's some other things, but I don't, I don't think they're that important since I can't remember them. Um, so yeah, I want your suggestions. I want your ideas. I want your comments. Uh, help me organize my stuff because we can do so much with this, like literally so much. Um, and I'm just having a blast here and sometimes I get stuck. I'm like, okay, well, what the hell should I do today? Uh, I could do this. I could do that. I could do this. I could do that. Well for today the next step video is gonna be the LC filter since I've been having it in my thumbnails And it's kind of fair to jump into the LC filters here. and It's gonna be pretty cool and pretty interesting I guess I hope it's gonna be pretty interesting and There's my HD threes most reliable goggle ever in my opinion and yeah, I think that's it guys. Yeah, that's really it. Maybe we'll do some more mods. I'm thinking of new mods and stuff. 
Uh, for example, if, you, if some of you probably noticed these and know what these are, these are Bluetooth modules. Now we could use these to log into our flight controllers, but I wanted to use that new app that comes with that SpeedyB flight controller. However, that app is running on BLE Bluetooth technology, which is Bluetooth 4.0, and um, these won't work. I tried to do a hack or a mod to get them to work, but it's just, it's, I couldn't. And if I could, it's going to be too much of a hassle. It's not really worth it. However, I did find the BLE modules for absolutely cheap on Banggood, and I've gone ahead and ordered some. I'll leave a link to them down below. So I'm going to be making a setup where you can just have a wire, where you can connect that Bluetooth module to any of your quads, if you, obviously if you have more than one quad. And you can just log in and just change whatever the hell you want. Like it's basically beta flight on your phone through Bluetooth. So you don't even need to carry a PC anymore. So that's very that's that's one less thing and you can get access to everything, which is very nice. I really do like that. And finally we see some uh good changes, I guess. And uh here the next thing we're gonna be testing is four in one ESCs, Dell RC, the T codes. Um, cause I'm pretty, I'm right, after I do the LC filter, to be honest, I might do the voltage regulator and then jump to the Tico 32 ESCs because I have no idea how they perform here. We tested the best budget fly color cause I'm really curious to take them up against these right here. I'm just very interested in doing that. I'm very curious also how that's going to stack up and turn out. And, um, yeah, that's it guys. This is just a little update video. I'll leave a link to everything down below that I think is interesting. If you want to go ahead and check those out. And um, I'll leave a link to my Patreon if you could support this shop. That would be super awesome. Everything gets put back into here, as you can tell. Um, I, I love this, and I just put everything back here into this here to enable me to do more and more. And uh, I really want to just cut down off of, you know, just the chit-chat reviews, and I really want to do more tests. And um, with your support, I'll be able to do that. And, um, yeah, that's it, guys. I really thank you for everything. We're about to hit 18K subscribers. Uh, it's been growing pretty quick now. And I just can't even keep up anymore. But I really do thank each and every one of you. Um, especially that one hater. <laughs> There's this one guy. Like in the first 30 minutes of my video. It's always a dislike. It's just that dislike. Dislike, dislike, dislike. It just makes me laugh. I mean, uh, thank you for that dislike. It means a lot. If you took the effort to dislike my video, I really do appreciate that actually. It actually does good for my video also. And um, yeah, that's really it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comment section what you guys want to see. And I uh, will see you next time. Peace out, guys.